We're focusing on one of the Jack sister publications right now, the Jack Cardiovascular Imaging in particular for September 2014. A paper called Epicardial Adipose Tissue Promotes CAC Progression, and I am with Dr. Amir Mahabadi, who is an MD at the University of Duisburg-Essen West German Heart and Vascular Center. And we're talking about, first off, Epicardial Adipose Tissue, or EAT, I love the acronym, Remind us again the epicardial adipose tissue. What's it? How is it important? What is it? Epicardial adipose tissue is fat tissue surrounding the heart and the coronary arteries within the pericardial sac. Uh, Twenty years ago, we thought that it was just an innocent bystander uh, protecting the coronaries during the motion of the heart. But over the last two decades, there has been more and more uh, research in that field indicating that it is an endocrine organ producing a lot of pro- and anti-inflammatory mediators surrounding um, and promoting inflammation in the coronary arteries. And it is therefore suggested to be associated with coronary artery disease. Now, in this case, you're actually doing, uh, this is kind of a sub-study within the Heinz-Nixdorf recall study. Remind us what that is first. Uh, the heinz of recall study is a, a population-based observational cohort study that prospectively enrolled uh, 4,814 uh, 4, participants in the year 2000 to 2003. Uh, the uh, participants were recruited from mandatory city registers of cities in um, uh, Germany. Uh, and in this study, we evaluated the value of um, modern imaging techniques to improve um, prediction of uh, cardiovascular and especially coronary events in the future. So how many patients were you looking at? The total were uh, 4,814 participants, but they were not patient at the, patients at right. the moment. They were just general population. In the present study, uh, we focused on the epicardial adipose tissue and its association with progression of coronary artery calcification as a sign of subclinical atherosclerosis. We know from recent data that uh, CAC score, the coronary artery calcification score, is a strong predictor for future events uh, and it uh, enables risk class reclassification of future events above traditional cardiovascular risk scores. Um, and in the present study, we looked at calcium score at baseline and calcium score at follow up and uh, aimed to investigate whether epicardial adipose tissue uh, promotes progression of calcification of the coronary arteries over time of five years. And were you surprised what you found? Um, kind of. We expected that there would be a correlation of epicardial adipose tissue with progression of ca um, uh, calcification, but what we found in specific is that it um, promoted most importantly the young people and the people with low calcium score at baseline. So for those people the percent progression uh, per standard deviation of epicardial adipose tissue was even higher than for people with uh, some extent of calcification already at baseline examination. That was kind of surprising. Why? Do you have it? I'm not why was it surprising, but why do you think there there is this connection in the young? Um, well, it might be that it influences especially the early atherosclerosis and non-calcified uh, uh, plaques. Of course, we don't have contrast-enhanced um, right. uh, CT imaging in our, as part of our study, so we cannot answer this question, but um, at least the hypothesis is that it may promote the early atherosclerosis process. Now, what's next? I mean, this sounds exciting, like we, we need to know more about it, so... Um, well, first of all, we don't need, uh, we don't know what influences epicardial adipose tissue. Uh, we need to look at the five-year follow-up data to see uh, what are predictors of increased epicardial fat. Um, and then, of course, we have to look at contrast-enhanced scans, repetitive scans, to see what happens with the non-calcified plug components over time if epicardial fat is increased or is not. Right. Congratulations, because I think it's a very interesting paper, and you know, for something that we thought for a long time wasn't really all that important, it sounds like we need to kind of rethink that it and maybe become more important in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, for Cardio Source World News, we have a lot more coverage from uh, the, the journals as well as from Barcelona, and I'm the executive editor, Rick McGuire.